Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Chaplet Monday on this second week of Advent. Hi, Cleo. Yay, Chaplet Monday. We are back. Second week, at, second week of Advent. We are going to celebrate and get to know St. Ambrose today. His feast day is coming up on December 7th. Hello, Bernice and Denise. Hi, Lucinda. Excited to have everyone here as we prepare the way for our Lord's coming as a beautiful baby. Thank you all for being here. St. Ambrose has some cool patronages. He is the patron saint of beekeepers. We're going to talk about that. Of learners, so anyone who's learning. Of beggars and also of Milan. Hi, everyone. Welcome in. Keep on coming. Keep on coming. We are getting to know St. Ambrose tonight. If you would like to download the prayer sheet, you can find it on our website at hrccr.com slash chaplets or on our homepage if you are looking at this the week of December 7th, 2022. If you're not, you will be able to find it at hrccr.com slash chaplets even after the second week of Advent. Um, and, you know, we've talked about this before, but there are over 100 saints on that page. So it might be a little bit overwhelming, but they are in alphabetical order. The top uh, eight, seven or eight, is all chaplets to Our Lady. So they're special um, images or visions of Our Lady, uh, depictions of Our Lady. And then after that, it starts with, you know, A to Z uh, saints that we've done in the last two and a half years. Um, for Chaplet Monday. And we do try to meet every Monday. We only uh, break if, you know, something's going on or there's a special holiday or my kids have a game. <laughs> so thank you all for your patience. Thank you for being with us. Again, we are going to get to know St. Ambrose and he has got a cool story. He is connected to a very well-known Catholic saint and I am going to talk about that in just a little bit. And also his connection to bees and why he is the patron saint of beekeepers. Um, as Minga and a couple of you have already started to do, thank you. Please make sure to put your intentions into the comments. When we move out of the story of St. Ambrose and into the chaplet portion of this evening, I will be lifting up all of your intentions for all of us to pray for each other. So make sure you are putting your intentions into the comments as we talk. So let's talk about St. Ambrose. He lived quite a long time ago in the 300s. Uh, he was born in 340 AD to a Roman Christian family. Now we have talked about saints from the 300s very often and finding a Christian family that was also Roman was very unusual. This is the time of great Christian persecution. Um, and so this was they lived in uh, present-day Germany. He grew up with two siblings. Uh, his father was very religious, and it is said that when he was an infant child, he was laying in his crib in his bed, and a swarm of bees surrounded him and covered his face and mouth and dropped honey on his tongue. So the boy was left unharmed. He was not stung. Uh, they did not mess with him in any way except to leave honey on his tongue. And his father was convinced that that was a sign from God that Ambrose would become a, an incredible public speaker at some point. Um, and it would turn out that this was true. He did become a great public speaker and one of the original four doctors of the church. So let's talk about how that happened. Um, his father did pass away when he was young, but left plenty of um, finances for him to get a very substantial education. Um, he studied law, literature, and rhetoric, which is speaking, public speaking, in Rome itself. Uh, he received a place on the council there, just like his father had had. He was made prefect or the governor of Liguria and Emilia around 372. And his headquarters were in Milan, which was at that time the second capital of Italy. Ambrose was governor until 374, which was just a couple of years 
when the former Bishop of Milan passed away. Now he was part of the election committee and he was attempting to keep the peace between the Nicene Church and the Arians. Now, of course, he belonged to the Nicene Church, but the Arians had a great respect for him because he was a very clear teacher. So whenever he would give talks or teachings, his clarity was very impressive to the Arians, which at the time was a heresy of the faith. And so, but they were, they were a very big faction and they had a lot of power in government. So um, Ambrose was attempting to keep the peace between the two factions. Uh, he ended up giving an address and speaking to everyone and that at that point, both sides were um, calling out for him to become the next Bishop of Milan. And Ambrose said, no, 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 that is not my purpose and that's not why I'm here. And they continue to want him to be bishop. And that was both sides. That was the Christian, the Nicene Christian Church and the Arian heresy, uh, heretical movement, that they all wanted him to be bishop because they all felt like he could be fair and impartial and a good leader. Remember back in that day, being a bishop didn't necessarily mean you started in the, as a priest. It was a very uh, political position. Um, and so Ambrose ran away. This is not what he was looking for. He was looking to grow spiritually, but not politically and not powerfully. And so he ran away to hide and apparently had been speaking to one of his colleagues, maybe receiving food from his colleague, and his colleague gave up his hiding place and everyone found him. And in the span of a week, Ambrose was baptized, ordained, and then consecrated Bishop of Milan on December 7th, 374. So he didn't make it very long after the previous bishop had passed away. Now, it, the interesting point of that date is that is what is his feast day, not the day of his death, the day that he became Bishop of Milan. And that says something about the significance that he would have on the Catholic Church at the time and the people you know, the Arian heresy and the Nicene Christian Church, how much of an impact for his um, feast day to be the date of his ordination to the priesthood and consecration to bishop rather than his uh, day of his death. Um, right away after he became bishop, he donated the entirety of the land that he had been given to the poor. He also gave up all of his wealth. So again, this was, remember, a political position which gained him land, wealth, power, and he gave it all away. So he agreed to stay leader, but he, he did not want any of the accolades that came with it. That made him extremely popular and oftentimes more powerful politically than the emperor himself. Now, that didn't make him popular with the emperor, but the emperor at that time could understand that this could be helpful to him as well. He continued to dive into theology at the time. So he was still very fascinated with his faith and wanting to learn. And he began to study Greek, the Greek language. And this allowed him to dive into the original translations of the Old Testament. All of the Old Testament that was originally written in Greek, he could dive into and help translate and help understand and help preach on those original writings, which is a very unique gift to have, right? We are, we read scriptures in the translation that we understand, but it's been changed, you know, it's been um, uh, translated and sometimes things are lost in translation. So it's important to go back to the original language oftentimes to understand meaning and impact. And so he loved diving into the Old Testament scriptures in the original Greek. He used all of this knowledge in his preaching. Again, going back to his historically, that sign that his father had sworn meant he was gonna be a public speaker, receiving the honey on the tongue from the bees. He did become an, um, an incredible preacher. Now here's where someone happened upon his preaching. And that someone that heard his preaching was Augustine of Hippo. We know that name. A, we know today that he is St. Augustine of Hippo, incredibly um, impactful saint in our Catholic faith. And it was Ambrose who was the catalyst 
in Augustine's conversion. So Augustine happened to hear Ambrose preaching. And it was at that time, after meeting Ambrose, that Augustine was inspired to reevaluate himself and he was forever changed. In 387, Ambrose baptized Augustine and St. Monica, who we know, prayed for years and years for her son, Augustine, to come back to the faith, even though he was living with women and living out of wedlock and he was um, fighting that calling, Ambrose was able to bring him back and have him baptized. And St. Monica called Ambrose an angel of God who uprooted my son from his former ways and led him to the convictions of Christ. So we have no doubt that it was St. Monica's prayers that allowed for the Holy Spirit to crack open the heart of Augustine. But it was at that point that Ambrose's words reached deep into that heart and continued that conversion experience. So I love, love, love that Ambrose is credited with being the reason that Augustine is such an incredible um, uh, mentor, saint, person, writer, uh, influence in the Catholic faith. And many of you had heard of Augustine. Not many of you may have heard of St. Ambrose. So that's really cool to see that the dot, the dot, the connect the dots. And nothing is an accident when it comes to God. Everything has purpose and meaning. Um, continuing to move on, Ambrose was uh, hoping to eradicate Arianism completely. However, it was a very powerful faction in Europe. Um, he often would try to attempt to theologically dispute their positions and their propositions. And at that point, if they couldn't win against him in debate, they would run to the government and complain about him. But Ambrose was always able to stay a step, of, a step ahead. Unfortunately, the Arians continued to increase in strength of numbers and powerful, and that was troublesome to, Arian, uh, to Ambrose. Around 386, Emperor Val Valentinian II and his mother Justine, along with many other of the government people, including clergy, laypersons, and the military, all professed Arianism. So again, that's the emperor at the time. And they were all declaring Arianism as their faith and attempting to change the entire country and all the surrounding countries. So they demanded that some of the churches in Milan be dedicated to them, their Arian faith. One in the city, one in the suburbs, and Ambrose refused them. He was ordered to appear in front of the council where he spoke eloquently in defense of the church and he is quoted with saying this. Oh, I love this. This is what he said to the council when they were attempting to take his churches. If you demand my person, I am ready to submit. Carry me to prison or carry me to death. I will not resist, but I will not ever betray the church of Christ. I will not call upon the people to save me. I will die at the foot of the altar rather than desert it. The tumult of the people I will not encourage, but God alone can appease it. And that is what he said to the council. Of course, the imperial court did not appreciate this response, but he was also at this point in time sought, he was sought by the government to help and speak to Magnus Maximus, who was attempting to descend upon Italy and take over Italy. So Valentinian was uh, thinking at the time, okay, we can't sway him, we can't get his churches yet, but we kind of need him right now to help to save and protect Italy. So they used him while they needed him. Ambrose was successful in delaying that uh, takeover. However, during the second attempt, he was not successful. Milan was taken. At this point, the emperor fled with his mother, but Ambrose stayed. He stayed there as they were taken over. Um, and he is credited with doing a great service to the sufferers of the time. So the people who were there living there, um, being mistreated, he was there to be with them and support them and pray with them and love on them and be their, their pastor, their shepherd. Um, 
Valentinian, even from away and fleeing, still wanted churches for the Arian movement, and Ambrose continued um, to fight back. Uh, they kept trying to order him to give up the churches. At one point, Ambrose and his congregation barricaded themselves within the church walls until the imperial order rescinded, until they backed off. Um, there is a lot more history here with Justine and Valentinian, and um, actually he would fight against them until his death on April 4th, 397. So he would continue to push back against that Arian, Arian um, heresy. He actually was succeeded as Bishop of Milan by the very uh, priest who had taught him theology when he first got baptized. And his name was Simplician, and he was the next Bishop of Milan. And he continued to uphold everything that Ambrose had um, attempted to pursue and embrace and celebrate while he was Bishop of Milan himself. So he did pass away then April 4th. It doesn't really talk about how. I don't know if that there's more information out there, but this came from Catholic.org and they didn't mention that. After that, they continued to talk about the impact that Ambrose had, how generous he was to the poor, how well known he was for saying that giving to the poor was just a repayment of God's resources. He says this, if you have two shirts in your closet, one belongs to you, but the other one belongs to a man with no shirt. So that can be very inspiring to a lot of us. He also attempted to um, introduce reforms in the order of the mass and the manner of public worship. Now here, I like what he says here, and some people may not agree, but I like what he says here. Remember, this is in the 300s. This is before 400. He said this, he was known for saying liturgical flexibility that keeps in mind that liturgy is a tool to serve people in worshiping God. It ought not become a rigid entity that is invariable from place to place. So he said that we need to allow for cultures to have an influence on the liturgy, for them to make it their own. That's why when you go to mass in Africa or mass in China, you see their culture seeping through, and we should. He's saying that is the beauty of Catholicism and the universality of our faith that the culture that you belong to can also become a part of your liturgical worship. And I love that. He also advised Augustine after his conversion, and he said very similar things to that. He said, you need to follow local liturgical customs wherever you are. He said, when I am at Rome, I fast on a Saturday, but when I am in Milan, I do not. I follow the custom of the church wherever I am. The advice remains today, and it's translated in English, very similar to, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. And that was what Ambrose pushed. He pushed that. You need to follow the cultural norms of the church that you are in. Uh, there's a lot more about what he wrote on right here in this last paragraph and what he in, had influence on, because remember, he was one of the first four of the doctors of the church. There are not very many. And he's one of the original four, the OG four. Um, he loved Our Lady. Uh, he loved studying about the virginity of Mary and her role as mother of God. He saw the value and loved the value and celebrated the value of celibacy, um, especially in the priesthood. And he is credited with authoring many of the church's important writings and hymns, including the Te Deum. Now, I have sung that before at Mass. It is beautiful. Probably, I'm not in the original language. I've sung it in English. And I'm sure he didn't write it in English. But he is also um, credited with composing the repertory Ambrosian chant, also known as the Antiphonal chant. So a lot of chants that our religious brothers and sisters use in praying the Liturgy of the Hours was written and composed by Ambrose himself. So Ambrose had an incredible impact on the faith that we see today, especially in religious orders, especially against Arian heresy, um, and again, is one of the first four doctors of the church and still impacts us today. And if nothing else, he is responsible for 
I mean, we know St. Monica really had a lot to do with it, but Ambrose is the person responsible for the conversion of Augustine of Hippo. And we all love Augustine, right? Uh, Augustine is known for saying, Lord, make me chaste, just not today. And how many of us can relate to that with regards to anything that we struggle with? So um, we are going to now move into the chaplet for your portion of St. Ambrose. So please, please continue to put your intentions into the comments and I will begin scrolling through and I will lift them up so that we may all be praying for you and all of your intentions. So St. Ambrose's story is very cool. You can definitely read it for yourself if you download the prayer sheet. Uh, if you ever ask for a chaplet from us, I will put that inside your little baggie. And so you'll get that from me as well uh, if you ever need a chaplet. So if you ever need any of these chaplets. Uh, and so just let us know, message us, and we would love to get those for you, Sharon. And I love making these for all of y'all. So the Chaplet of St. Ambrose is one of our standard Niners. That means that it begins with a crucifix. Got a beautiful large rosary crucifix on here. And three sets of three. And each set is one Our Father, one Hail Mary, and one Glory Be. And then it closes with a medal. Now this is a medal from France. St. Ambrose was a little tricky to find. So, oh, I can't get clear. That's St. Ambrose writing in his, um, well, he's got his bishop's hat and he is writing in his big book with a feather pen. I love that. So that's a beautiful image of him. And you can see uh, that image is here as well. That's the image that's on the medal. And then there's the beautiful image of St. Ambrose with the quote that I said about the shirt. If you have two shirts, you should give one to the poor. Uh, all right. So let's move into the chaplet portion, our niner. If you have another niner, you can use that one as well. And I've lost my other chaplet. Oh, he does have a tiny saint. So here is his tiny saint, which I love. He's so cute. Little Bishop, Bishop Ambrose. All right. And I usually take these to youth nights and give them out uh, when people get answers correct. So I, I like to make those for them. All right, so we're going to quiet our hearts and minds and we're going to lift up all of our intentions before we get into our prayers. I am scrolling up to find all of your intentions. So I'm lifting each one of you up, all of you that are here watching and praying with us. Minga asks that we all pray for those suffering from cancer. And she also lifts up Robert Martinez, prayers for his healing. She lifts up Carlos Martinez, who is recovering from shoulder surgery. Bernice and Denise are lifting up prayers for all the sick. Elena is lifting up prayers for Larry Cook, brother of her son-in-law, Terry Cook. He had a foot amputation today and may need to have part of his leg amputated in a few days. So we are lifting up Larry and we are lifting up... Terry, who is caring for him and, and praying for him. Um, Mary lifts up prayers for healing for all those who need healing. Any time of any type of healing. I love that. Bienvenida, we lift up your husband Romeo for his complete healing, and we thank Jesus ahead of time. I love that, Bienvenida. Lenora, we lift up your daughters, your grandchildren, and your sisters that they may walk without pain. Jane. We pray for healing prayers for everyone that needs them. Sharon lifts up prayers for healing for her husband's foot and her mother's shoulder and upper arm. Pray for Miss Joyce. Lenora lifts up prayers for her brother-in-law and all the cancer victims and all the ones that need prayers. Um, Um, I'm sorry, I'm having tech technical difficulty. So, Lenora, we lift up your brother-in-law and all cancer victims and all the ones that need prayers. Sharon, we lift up um, sisters Reese and Fernanda Gutenkunst for success in their debate contest. That's exciting. Sharon asks for prayers for emotional healing. She lifts up prayers of thanksgiving for her granddaughter Emily's first Holy Communion. May she continue to hunger for Jesus. Amen. Bienvenida, we lift up your daughter Ruby 
your granddaughter Jayla and her family for their healing from the flu and in Thanksgiving for us praying for you. Praise God. Cleo, we lift up all those dealing with health issues, anxiety, sadness, and loneliness, praying for family and friends and continuous protection prayers for all police officers. Amen. Debbie, we pray that the doctor will find another procedure to stop the bleeding in your stomach. We're going to pray for wholeness and healing. Wholeness and healing over Miss Debbie. Bernadette prays that her two-year-old great-granddaughter gets rid of this bad cough she has. And those respiratory things, they're hitting the babies hard right now. We pray for all young ones that are sick. Francis lifts up her nephew, Max Cruz, who, from his, that he may heal from his stent surgery. Amen. Sharon lifts up prayers for the repose of the soul of Mr. Melvin Baja. Is that how you say it? Father of a close friend of yours. Elsa lifts up prayers for her family and extended family. Including Javier and yourself. And we pray for... We ask for special prayers for Emilio. Melinda lifts up all children that need healing from any illnesses. Minga lifts up her brother-in-law who turned 92 yesterday. Happy birthday to your brother. Those are our intentions. We pray for all those who have died today or who will die today. Um, we pray for all the families that are experiencing loss. All the families that will be celebrating um, their first Christmas without a loved one. So we pray for those family members. Um, we lift up all those children who play sports. Keep them safe and healthy. Um, we pray for the emotional healing of all teenagers. Especially those that struggle with um, mental health. I pray for all teachers and I pray for all catechists. I pray in Thanksgiving for those of you, all of you that volunteer your time and talent and very often your treasure as well to teach the faith, just like St. Ambrose. So I thank Jesus for all of you. So we will enter into the prayer portion by beginning on the crucifix of our Niner. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. O loving Lord Jesus, I, a sinner, not presuming on my own merits, but trusting in your mercy and goodness, with fear and awe, approach the table of your most sacred banquet. For I have stained both my heart and body with many sins, and have not kept a strict guard over my mind and my tongue. Wherefore, O gracious God, O awful majesty, I, a wretched creature, entangled in difficulties, have recourse to you, the fount of mercy. To you I fly for healing, and I take refuge under your protection. And I ardently desire to have him as my Savior, who I am unable to face as my judge. To you, Lord, I show my wounds. To you I lay bare my shame. I know that my sins are many and great, and on their account I am filled with fear. But I trust in your mercy, which is endless. Look down on me, therefore, with the eyes of mercy, Lord Jesus Christ, eternal King, God and man, crucified for men. Hear me, for my hope is in you. Have mercy on me, for I am full of sin and wretchedness. You who never cease to let flow the fountain of mercy, hail, victim of salvation, offered for me and for all mankind on the tree of the cross. Hail, noble and precious blood, flowing from the wounds of my crucified Lord Jesus Christ, washing away the sins of the whole world. Remember, Lord, your creature whom you have redeemed with your blood. I am grieved because I have sinned. I desire to make amends for what I have done. Take away from me, therefore, O most merciful Father, all my iniquities and all my sins, that being purified both in soul and body, I may worthily partake of the holy of holies and grant that this holy oblation of your body and blood, of which, though unworthy I propose to partake, may be to me the remission of my sins. 
the perfect cleansing of all my offenses, the means of driving away all evil thoughts and of renewing all holy desires, the accomplishment of works pleasing to you, as well as the strongest defense for soul and the body against the snares of my enemy. Amen. That prayer was written by St. Ambrose. We move to the sets of beads where we'll pray one Our Father, one Hail Mary, and one Glory Be. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We move to the second set. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And we move to the third and final set. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We move to the medal of St. Ambrose, where we say this final prayer together which is another prayer written by St. Ambrose to be used before communion. But both of these prayers can be used before communion. These are both beautiful. Lord Jesus Christ, I approach your banquet table in fear and trembling, for I am a sinner and I dare not rely on my own worth, but only on your goodness and mercy. I am defiled by many sins in body and soul and by my unguarded thoughts and words. Gracious God of majesty and awe, I seek your protection. I look for your healing, poor troubled sinner that I am. I appeal to you, the fountain of all mercy. I cannot bear your judgment, but I trust in your salvation. Lord, I show my wounds to you and uncover my shame before you. I know my sins are many and great and they fill me with fear but I hope in your mercies, for they cannot be numbered. Lord Jesus Christ, eternal King, God and man, crucified for mankind, look upon me with mercy and hear my prayer, for I trust in you. Have mercy on me, full of sorrow and sin, for the depth of your compassion never ends. Praise to you, saving sacrifice, offered on the wood of the cross for me and for all mankind. Praise to the noble and precious blood, flowing from the wounds of my crucified Lord Jesus Christ and washing away the sins of the whole world. Remember, Lord, your creature for whom you have redeemed with your blood. I repent my sins and I long to put right what I have done. Merciful Father, take away all my offenses and all my sins. Purify me in body and soul and make me worthy to taste the Holy of Holies. May your body and blood, which I intend to receive, though I am unworthy, be for me the remission of my sins, the washing away of my guilt, the end of my evil thoughts, and the rebirth of my better instincts. May it incite me to do the works pleasing to you, 
and profitable to my health and body and soul and be a firm and be a firm defense against the wiles of my enemies. Amen. St. Ambrose, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you all so much for joining me tonight. Thank you for praying with me, and thank you for praying for me. My whole family can use the prayers, as always, as I'm sure you can as well. And so be assured that I am praying for you daily, and I am praying for you always, and I am loving you from far and from near. Uh, his feast day is the day before the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. Remember, that's a holy day of obligation. Wherever you are, most of your churches have Masses coming up on Wednesday night or Thursday during the day. So just a gentle reminder to get to Mass if you're able, if you're able to. All right. God bless all of you. Have a wonderful Advent season in the second week of Advent. I'll be back for the third week of Advent next week with St. John of the Cross. So God bless all of you. Have a blessed and relaxed and restful evening. And as always, I pray that you sleep with the angels and rise with the saints. God bless each and every one of you. And I pray healing over all of you. Amen. And God bless you. Good night.